It's quite the experience. Get ready. We've got a lot of unique things to offer. In a one-of-a-kind city. People are so nice. Really caring since here. We're hanging with the locals in Eau Claire. Today on... Discover Wisconsin. This is an anthem for those who look for more and never say they've seen it all. Windows and let's take a ride. Let's tonight. Hi. I'm Mariah Haberman. Eau Claire is home to some pretty unique draws. They have a diverse music scene, they're the horseradish capital of the world, and people play coop here. We'll get to all that in just a minute. Here in this city, you have to start with the rivers. Really the confluence of the two rivers are really what the city's been built on. We've got beautiful parks. The Eau Claire and the Chippewa rivers make for a scenic trip on their own. Many picturesque views are seen from the bridges along the Eau Claire River, flowing in from the east. That kind of is the embodiment of uh, Eau Claire. It's, it's kind of a beautiful river city. The Chippewa River flows in from the north and continues all the way to the Mississippi River. The way that it meanders through Eau Claire isn't straight, making it a hotbed for tubing. Tubing here has become a huge part of, of the summer culture yeah. in this community. Just in the last five, seven years, it's exploded. This sounds like an activity for me, Mariah. So I haven't been tubing on a regular river before. What are the, what are the things I need to know? Probably be tied together and don't get stuck on the bridges. Well, how hard can this be? The tubing experience is really up to you. There are many places along the two rivers where you can pick up the flow. One of the popular launch points is where the two rivers come together at Phoenix Park. Phoenix Park is a gem. It's been around for several years. It houses our farmer's market. The downtown farmer's market is open Saturdays in May and then expands to Wednesday and Thursdays from June to October. The rainbow of offerings from local providers is vibrant and tantalizing, especially when you find items that just came out of the garden. Just down the hill, some area-grown talent performs in the warmer months. We have a very big concert series that happens every Thursday in the summers. There's about 1,500 people that come every week to that. The city had a great vision on putting a beautiful park down here, and one of the nice things about the park is the pavilion we're standing under right now. This gives us a lot of options, and uh, right now it's currently being used for Taste of the Valley. Taste of the Valley brings local restaurants and food vendors together under one pavilion, making it pretty handy for visitors to try dozens of treats in a small traveling area. Well, the hard part is, I think, is deciding what you're going to have because if you come with a few people, everyone wants to have a nice sampling of the different foods that are available. Eric, the Eau Claire landscape is dotted with more than a dozen parks that all have their special charm and activities. That's really what uh, parks are all for, is to, for people to come down and enjoy them. Hey guys, I'd like to show you one park that stands out as a sports complex that's steeped in history and activity. The first baseball game played in Carson Park was back in 1937. The baseball stadium dates all the way back to the days of Henry Aaron playing his first year of professional baseball here. And that's just been added to and enhanced. A statue honoring Hammer and Hank's time with the Eau Claire Bears stands in the plaza outside the ball field. The stadium was placed on the National Register of Historic Places in 2003. But don't think of it as a museum. It's still in full use today. Catch a game with the Northwoods League, Eau Claire Express, or a handful of other hometown teams. Speaking of museums, though, you'll find parks for that, too. They are continually updating their exhibits to celebrate and uh, tell the story of the history of our city. One doing just that is Chippewa Valley Museum. It combines state-of-the-art interactive exhibits with historical items that bring the past to life. Bonjour. Nimawendem wabaminyan mienua. The displays rotate on a seasonal basis and even have a children's only section, so there's always a reason to plan a return trip. Now all the learning isn't inside. The Paul Bunyan logging camp with its own giant statue of the burly lumberjack recreates a 19th century Northwoods logging camp. 
The self-guided tour boasts larger-than-life tools from the period, as well as hearing from some of the people that may have lived or frequented this camp. Hello, my name is Hugh McCall, the camp blacksmith. For a full slate of everything going on at Carson Park, or any of the parks for that matter, head to discoverwisconsin.com and check out the Eau Claire destination page. Coming up, we take in the music scene, and I can see your toe tapping already. Welcome back. Eau Claire hits a high note on Discover Wisconsin. The Eau Claire culture is a music-loving culture. And the beat they've been loving the longest? Jazz. It's been here for probably 40 or 50 years. This is one of the oldest jazz studies programs in the country. I dropped in on jazz guru Bob Baca as he gets ready for the Eau Claire Jazz Festival. Hey, guys. Oh. Hey, Bob. Okay, so Mariah's here. I was hoping to give the conductor thing a try. Think I can do it? Here, take your hand and do this. Okay. That's all you do. One, two, a one, two, three, four. <laughs> to watch my full conducting debut and a little impromptu dancing, check out the bonus clips on our website. There are dozens of unique venues in Eau Claire to enjoy live music. Part of the Eau Claire Jazz Festival lets you step out and sample several at a time. Oh, and even turn back the clock. On 52nd Street tonight, you're going to hear every part of the different eras of jazz. The showcase is named after a similar collection of jazz music available during the 1930s on New York City's 52nd Street. The best way I can describe it is it's all jazz. From 5 o'clock until 2 o'clock in the morning. The neighborhood that 52nd Street shows off is the place to be all year round. Barso Street is really the heart of downtown. Um, you will find a lot of activity there. Across the river, college kids and longtime residents alike all enjoy the diversity of Water Street. People from all age ranges like to dine, shop, and recreate in that Water Street area. For those about to rock, check out Eau Claire's House of Rock, located midway down Water Street. There's definitely a lot of diversity here, everything from metal to hip hop to straight rock music hipster, there's just a lot of variety in this town. And Each of these spurs is represented in a unique event held at the House of Rock called Decadent Cabaret. Decadent's a great opportunity because we've got 35 acts playing here. It's a great way for somebody, for somebody that's not familiar with the local scene to come in and check out what the scene kind of has to offer. We already said Eau Claire's music scene is diverse, so it shouldn't be any surprise when tens of thousands of country music fans hit the area every July. We're at Country Jam, Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Seeing this little piece of land grow into a little village for three days. Country Jam is one of those places you can enjoy on your own, lone wolf style, just you and the music. Or you can bring a few friends to come along and enjoy it. Uh, sounds like a party. It's like the perfect size. It's just big enough that there's so much going on that it's really fun. We have been coming to Country Jam for probably close to 20 years. A fun twist for those with general admission tickets? It's first come, first served seating behind the reserved area. You have to see the race that ensues when the gates open. The Visit Eau Claire Fun Patrol has you covered. Whether at Country Jam or any other event in the area, the Fun Patrol provides info about Eau Claire with games, lights, and music. Want to jam out to more than just a few hours of country music? Make it a long weekend and camp just a few feet from the stage. Uh oh, we brought a whole convoy down and we're gonna stay all weekend. The real draw to Country Jam is seeing the big country acts up close and maybe getting a wave. Hey, Chase or special moment from a big star. I'm here with one of them, Jennifer Nettles. Hi. Jennifer, what's it like to play in Eau Claire? I love Eau Claire. I love playing Country Jam. I love the fact that everybody comes out and they are in it for the weekend. They're here camping, they're having a great time. To fill the highbrow music portion of the show, the historic State Theater in downtown Eau Claire hosts numerous performances. More specifically, it's the home for the Chippewa Valley Symphony Orchestra. Here, musicians are really like, we want to play some good music, and also not just that, but we want to play really well. The orchestra is made up of local performers that are extremely talented, but have chosen to stay in the area. People actually come to our concerts and they see basically their friends and their family on stage uh, enjoy playing. Check out all the events and music festivals happening in the area by first visiting our website and choosing Eau Claire as your destination.
Next, move over, Beethoven. We delve into the unique attractions around Eau Claire. Thanks for coming back to Discover Wisconsin. You must have smelled the horseradish. Eau Claire is the world's largest producer of horseradish. And so Silver Spring Gardens is, produces not only the horseradishes, but the mustards that are used by uh, the brewers. The horseradish is still grown on the original farm south of Eau Claire that produced the first batch of this spicy plant. Have you ever heard of Coop? If you're shaking your head no, then Eau Claire is just a place to find out. It's only the Coop capital of America. The U.S. Coop championships are even held in Eau Claire. Dozens of teams go head to head to crown the best Coop team. All the competition is done under the watchful eye of Eric Anderson. He is the one responsible for bringing the game stateside. How do you play Coob? So you take these batons, and you stand on your baseline here, and when you throw them, you have to throw them underarm, and you have to throw them so they're vertical, so there's no helicopter, so the batons can't go sideways at all, and you try to knock over the Coobs on the other side of the field. One really, really important rule of the game, though, is you can't knock over the king during the game, so if you knock him over during the game, you lose. Enough of this practice stuff. I'm taking you on, Eric. <laughs> this is gonna be easy. How'd you find out about Coob? I, uh, nice shot. I lived in uh, Sweden for one year, and so all my friends, the people that we met over there, and my relatives, uh, everybody plays Coob in Sweden, so we found ourselves moving to Eau Claire, and then uh, just started introducing it to people. When you brought it back, here to Eau Claire, did you ever think it would grow and be this big? Uh, no, not at all. We, uh, we had our first tournament actually just on the other side of the river there, and we had 35 people, and uh, every year it just grows more and more. Find the Coob rules and the dates for the U.S. Coob Championship on the Eau Claire destination page. They're very exciting to watch when they're ripping past you, going, whoa, look at that. And you know, they're probably 15 feet in the air and uh, skiing could go as far as uh, 300 feet. Another international sport has a competition and training complex here that's matched by only a handful of others around the country. Silvermine Hill is one of only six of its size in the whole United States. Um, it's right here in our backyard here in the Chippewa Valley in Eau Claire. The Silver Mine Invitational is a prestigious ski jumping competition that brings worldwide talent and experiences. Until you're here actually seeing it and hearing it and, and the sounds, yeah, you just really don't understand the sport. You can see it on TV and you go, hmm, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, there they go. But unless you're here and you're seeing it, it, you just don't get that feel. Now, here's an event I've only ever witnessed in the summer when the water may feel a little more refreshing. We never heard of it. I didn't think any rollers would want to do it, but a bunch of them thought it sounded like a great idea. The Winter U.S. Log Rolling Championships are an Eau Claire original. Hey, we're in the North. This is, this is what we do. This is our heritage, so why not, why not include this in such a fun, great event? The first competition was held in 2014 as a companion to the Eau Claire Polar Plunge. It's a great time for us to get together in our off season and it puts on a really fun show. We're from Wisconsin, we're crazy. Oh, let's think warmer thoughts. And when I do that, I think about summer evenings and the nostalgic glow of a drive-in theater. The Gemini Drive-In on Eau Claire's north side is one of just 10 outdoor movie theaters in the state. This throwback to a bygone time has all the bells and whistles with crystal clear sound and a digital projector to recreate a picture perfect experience from your childhood. Start your next day energized with another venue unique to Eau Claire. Introducing Metropolis Resort's award-winning comic book themed Chaos Water Park. We're about the, the biggest and best you're gonna find in the local area. You can come swim on our on our water slides in the Lazy River and, and have a good time and at a good price. But there's nothing like that around here. Next to the water park, your kids can stay dry while still having a blast at Action City Family Fun Center. It's surrounded by just all kinds of fun. We've got um, one of the larger indoor go-kart tracks that you can find on a little bit higher speed. Want to plan your wet or dry getaway? Or want to see more winter log rolling? Or even learn more about Coob? Just visit our website and find the Eau Claire destination page. After this short break, we'll show you where to go to hang with the locals. We are hanging with the locals in Eau Claire on Discover Wisconsin. Find some of the really good spots and the good times to go there, you gotta talk to the locals. One of those spots is actually several spots. It's the Eau Claire Sculpture Tour. John, hey! Oh, hi, Abby. How's it going? Real good, real good. Well, you're from Eagle River, so I thought this was a natural place to start. Absolutely. How many sculptures are there on this tour? We have 32 stops. Awesome, I can't wait to see them. Let's go. Let's get going, yes. There are three main groups of sculptures. Just grab a map along the route to find your way. 
Catch all the beautiful views we took in by watching the bonus clips on our website. I believe we're the only city in Wisconsin that has anything like this, where we get all these sculptures in, they're here for a year, they go away, we get new sculptures in the next year. It's an ongoing thing. You can come back every year and see different sculptures. Abby, visiting all the areas of Eau Claire may get you a little thirsty. What better solution than a place that has both libations and locals? Lazy Monk Brewing. Usually people come here in the groups. We do have a regulars and they come here and uh, they didn't know themselves uh, before, but right now they are friends just because of this place. Lazy Monk brews their own beer on site in the style of traditional German and Bohemian beers. But there is a different feeling when you come to enjoy your favorite here. We are at the bar, we are, we are at the tap room, and people can come here and enjoy themselves. Uh, it is uh, family friendly, so uh, if the people have a kids, they can come here. Uh, kids can have a root beer or soda. As Eric finishes his sampling in the tap room, I'll take you to one of Eau Claire's historic industrial venues. Banbury Place, which was the big tire factory, and went out in the early 90s. It's now this wonderful asset. More specifically, Infinity Beverages Winery and Distillery. You have heard of farm to table. Well, here, it's more like from still to glass. Well, you're gonna get to try a lot of one-of-a-kind wines and spirits you can't get anywhere else. Uh, like, we've got a watermelon brandy, a very small batch product, but uh, pretty much one-of-a-kind in the world. Nobody else makes that. The quaint bar and tasting lounge is a welcoming area. And some nights, they've even got entertainment. Uh, we get a lot of fun people coming through here. We get a lot of people that uh, they meet each other in here for the first time, and then they end up making plans to meet back here in the future. Find your favorite beer or spirit by checking out the extensive lists for each location on the Eau Claire destination page. Find the essence of Eau Claire all under one roof. The place, volume one. I should get this apron. Hey, Mariah. Hey. We'll look at all that stuff soon. I know you're excited, but let's go upstairs. It all starts with the magazine first, so let's take a look. All right, let's go. So this is all Eau Claire in here. Everything is Eau Claire, yeah. 99.9% .9 of the content in here is stuff about this community, written by people of this community, photographed by people of this community. Coming out every two weeks, Volume 1 is the Eau Claire What to Do and What's Hot Bible. Everything started with the magazine. You know, that's where everything began. And we cover the arts and music and the happenings, downtown development, all those sorts of things, recreation. And then we have our online component with volume1.org, which has all the content that, that would be in the magazine, plus more. Downstairs is a store that oozes everything that makes Eau Claire, well, Eau Claire. So what was your inspiration to starting the store part of Volume 1? We were finding there weren't really enough places to get those items and to go get that book you just read about. So we decided we needed to create a physical incarnation of what Volume 1 is. So the first thing I noticed at your store is all of the Wisconsin and Eau Claire pride. You guys are pretty yeah, proud to be here, huh? We are. We are for sure. Yeah, a lot of these t-shirts these are things we design ourselves. So do you get a lot of residents of Eau Claire coming in here, but also tourists and visitors from around the region? It's a really good, strong mix of both, really. I mean, this is stuff that locals love, and a lot of times when it's something that a local loves, it's something that a tourist is going to love, too. Volume 1 also provides a space for local artists to display their inspirations in the main level gallery. You know what I love most about Eau Claire? There are two amazing rivers, they're unique destinations, the music is awesome, and the locals are so fun and welcoming. We had a blast in Eau Claire. I think you will, too. We'll see you next week on Discover Wisconsin. Fried mashed potatoes. Does what it says in the box. I should have told you that before. Yeah. <laughs> You're such a cheater, Eric.